welcome to ASFN Fishing. Thank you for joining us again today. And if you've subscribed already, thank you very much for your support. Remember guys to subscribe and uh, push that little bell button to get notifications every time we upload a new video. Now today I'm sitting in the company of Royalty, um, the five star series of Saltiga Reels. And uh, I've gone through the whole series of Daiwa Reels available in South Africa pretty much. And all the new ones that's coming out we obviously fish with. And uh, this is now my personal range of reels which took me a hell of a long time to make the decision and finally get them on board. Now this was not a very difficult decision but it, I made it over a couple of years to finally get my range of reels onto Saltiga level. So on the multiplier side I already fished and uh, caught some lovely fish on the 50H and uh, now on the, the spinning or the grinder series, I've added the two editions of the Saltiga 6.5 and the 5000. The 4500 is also available in South Africa. And then of course, no introduction needed, the Black Beauty, the Dogfight 8000. Now, continuously, Daiwa's working at new technology. Now these reels don't need any introduction. They have pretty much got the bells and whistles and have proven themselves with so many great catches all over the world. Record catches in many, many instances and they've outfished many other competitor reels. Um, that's all dependent on species, areas and of course, most importantly, the angler. But guys, now the reason I'm, I'm making this video this is pretty much what you need to target every species our coastline or the ocean has got to offer from the shore and even from the boat. Now a lot of guys, look, I won't go, go target Grandis, uh, Marlin, 1000 pound Marlin on, on this. That would not be the right uh, um, reel to use. However, I have done that and uh, we have targeted some Marlin up to, up to 200 kilos we hooked on them and they'll handle that. That I've got no doubt. But other than that, these are the reels ultimately that will last you for a very, 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 very long time, especially if you look after them. But they are built to do everything possible to avoid corrosion on these reels with three mag seal bearings as well as the rotor bearing. Um, the line roller is mag sealed as well. So in other words, Daiwa made sure that as little possible salt water or corrosion can get into these reels. These drag systems run from the small reels, I think it's 24 pounds, all the way up to 66 pound drag systems just on the Saltigas. The dogfight, if I'm not mistaken, might be more. Yeah, 30 kilo, yeah, it's also 66 uh, pound drag system, a 30 kilo drag. And line capacity, as we know, this uh, I've spooled with 40 pound and it's just on a thousand meters and that's with j 40 pound and I'm fishing a 150 pound j leader on you and uh, I actually prefer I managed to get a spool of the the multicolor they use for jigging which I find a really really nice leader when you're fishing the heavier gear um, this I got Mike Diet Kingfisher to spool for me so nice of him I'll have to get him an ice cream or something. But um, he spooled this with, for me with uh, j Braid Grand. This is 30 pound, which is ideal. Look, j Braid's very underrated. Um, so pretty much the 30 pound breaks, I think, oh, I think it's 44, 42 pounds. And for casting now, this reel with its drag system, this braid, you can get top distance using the medium heavy Grind Elite as well as the strength and abrasion on the 30 pound is phenomenal. I'll even fish over reef or in the reef for bigger fish with this setup. I'm quite confident to do that. Now this one I'm still spool. Maybe I should have spooled it today on the video. This I'm going to spool with 20 pound, the 5000. And this I'll match up with 13, 12, 13 foot Saltus rods um, that we've got in South Africa available. Uh, even the power power slim rods the 12 foot 6 this will work just fine and 20 pound on year even more distance and with the smoothness of these drags guys you can actually go thinner on your braid because less chance of you getting that little snag uh, when a fish is taking off at a, at a hell of a speed 
let's just talk about the application and matching them up with rods now this specifically I will put on my Daiwa tournament 15 foot perfect matchup for all bigger fish the sardine run this is the real I'll get a space pool well already arranged a space pool where we'll put 65 pound J braid on which breaks at about 80 pounds so that's kind of what you're looking for for the sardine run to to give you the best possible chance and on that topic guys I want you to to everyone just to be considerate when the sardines arrive we're right there now it's happening see the shoals coming up in trans sky but when there's a smash and there's a lot of anglers a lot of fish get lost and with a the braid they're swimming around with meters of braid behind them just think don't get all fist course when you're on the spot and uh, not think of of the best interest of our environment and the fish so just walk a little bit away put it out it gives you a better chance to land that fish ultimately that's what all of us want to do where there's a bunch of lines if you go cast and you hook one of those big fish nine times out of ten you'll be burnt off it will cost you a lot of money to replace your braid you're not going to get the photo or the actual catch you were looking for as well as the fish are swimming around with a whole bunch of braid behind it so yes this is the ideal reel to actually take to a sardine run to a smash looking for those bigger sharks um, fish of over 300 kilos now have been landed on on this reel so no doubt that it can handle it the 6.5 specifically I got and I'm going to switch this between two rods because I can't afford two reels yet but <laughs> the medium heavy with 30 pound and also on the the grind elite medium heavy 15 foot there's a 14 foot 6 as well but I prefer my 15 foot and then on the heavy the grind elite heavy you can also fit this reel so I can switch it between the two rods depending what my application is so on the heavy I would rather go for heavier bigger baits and that's fishing for bigger flat fish and sharks 150 to 200 kilos nice off points um, a nice tackle setup you can even have a spool with 40 pound j braid for doing that um, on the 8000 spool you've got a lot more capacity on this you'll probably get 750 to 800 meters of the same diameter and there you'll get a thousand on the drag system is strong enough to handle both with braid these days we stop the fish we manage they don't take as much line and what I mean with that is they don't take as much line as what they normally did the stretch and monofilament didn't allow us to stop them as direct as uh, directly as what we're doing now with with uh, braid yes it's hard on your arms on your back on everything but you can really bully a fish now what's the benefit of bullying a fish with braid and with spinning gear is you land them quicker which means the chance of survival after releasing them is much better if you fight the same fish for two and a half hours it will really be exhausted when you release that fish it had all that uh, energy or, or, or distress it, it gave off in the water so there might already be bigger sharks hanging around to come and see what this is if it, if it wasn't eaten even before you landed it good chance it can be eaten if it can't swim away after you release it if you use braid that same fish that would have taken you two and a half hours on monofilament you can now land uh, maybe in an hour hour and a half which gives it a much better chance of swimming away and a much higher survival rate now having said that both monofilament multiplier setups and grinder and braid setups has got their advantages and disadvantages like I said with uh, with braid much tougher on your arms and your back and good chance of getting burnt off in a crowd where monofilament and a multiplier you've got a better chance of actually landing the fish as well as in crowds um, it's a longer fight less stress on yourself but you can almost guide the fish more than forcing it like you're doing with with uh, a grinder and, and braid setup now guys this is purely my opinion and what i've experienced and the way i see it so both of them's got their advantages yes some distances are claimed further on grinders than with multipliers however all the distances achieved in casting trials and all these tournament or casting events they have it's nothing new now on grinders and braid than what we used to on the multipliers so depending on the person casting the style what diameter line they were using the sinkers all of that plays a role we can't really say that get that uh, grinders and braid gets better distance here's the, the big advantage especially if you go to the lighter 
lighter reels but also on the heavy reels when you're fighting that fish you're so direct to it with braid that you can feel everything you can feel its head shake you can feel it wandering off that it doesn't know it's hooked and it's just chatting to another shark or appreciating this you can literally feel anything that's that's what i mean and even when the bite comes a lot of uh, your your edible species when targeting smaller species are quite shy and quite clever in the way they bite um I mean, if we look, just let's use bronze, bronze bream as an example. They're a great example where sometimes the, those bigger, over four kilo fish will just l pick you up slightly like that. They're not going to hit you, swallow the bait necessarily and swim away. That does happen, don't get me wrong. But I've hooked them many times where you just, you just feel that little bit, which I probably wouldn't have felt when I was using monofilament. The negative of that is a lot of times when you're new to braid, you strike too fast or too early. The fish is just touching, testing that bait. It hasn't taken it properly. You're getting excited because the, the feeling and what you're feeling and experiencing is amplified because of braid and you strike way too early and sometimes or most of the times missing the fish. So that's something getting used to. You need to let your fish eat. What I do is I like keeping the rod back a bit and uh, when I can feel the fish, there's, there's play for it to take it down properly before I strike. Otherwise, if you're standing here, you just got that little bit before you're going to strike. And a lot of times I find myself, if I forget to hold the rod a bit back, running forward so the fish can eat properly or moving forward fast so that it can eat properly before I set that hook. And all, guys, it's all subject to what method you're fishing. Are you fishing live bait? Are you fishing bait? I'm referring to bait, letting that fish take it properly. And the same with a circle hook. A lot of times with certain fish like hammerheads, I allow three to five meters for that fish to eat off my reel, then I click over, go down and set a circle hook. Uh, so it, it really comes down to species, the type of bait, the size of your bait um, that you're using that, will, that you're going to get used to while using braid. This is taken on market by Storm, the grind, grinders and uh, fishing with braid and really made a difference in how the guys fish. It's very sport fishing like, um, instead of the conventional way we used to. However, don't take me wrong, using multipliers is absolutely, in my opinion, also sport fishing. Sport fishing is the person doing it. It's uh, what their objective is, what their attitude is towards the environment and the species. Are they looking to actually release this fish look for the experience share that experience with something as special as that species in the environment we live in so that concludes sports fishing in my mind or just a little bit of it maybe we'll do a video on that uh, that one day but I mean that's some of the discussions between uh, hook and cook as we used to refer to and release orientated anglers so yeah back on the topic this is the ultimate range of reels for me I think uh, there's no way to go higher than this. Maybe we'll add the 4,500 later, but it's very similar in size, just a smaller spool. So from there, um, smaller reels available, we'll switch to the 4,000 and 3,000 saltus. Then you've pretty much got a full range that you can handle any, any, any fish that uh, we've got on our coastline and uh, land them quite easily. So yeah, that's a bit of a chit chat about, more a brag session about my new range of reels. And also a bit of a chit chat with regards to grinders, fishing braid and matching them up with what rod, what reel and how to target or what species you would target with what setup. A lot of people will ask us and send us the comments on what size is required. Now, just to give you guys an idea, this caliber of reel and it all based on your budget, what you're shopping. The difference is you can buy the same size reel from 2000 Rand up to Saltiga level. The difference is this will need more maintenance and the lifespan on it might be shorter than this. And that's the, that's the difference. It's the quality of the material used, the bearings right through the, the strength and power of this, the drag system, smoothness, that probably is the most important part in my opinion. Because if you look after a cheap reel, it can last you fairly long. Um, this obviously is a lot more robust, can, can handle a lot more punishment. But same thing, you would want to look after this reel. Where the difference comes in is that drag system, that hair-like tournament drag system. Now, on the Saltiga drag system, I'm sure a lot of you have read Alan Hawke's report on it as well, where it's the, the um, 
tournament drag system, there's two different ones. The automatic, the ATD, which people talk about. And then the ultimate, the UTD. We get the UTDs here. Apparently, if you read Alan, well, best you read Alan Hawke's report on it, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just naming conventions for different countries in the world. Because automatic in some countries might mean something different, which they'll take literally. Um, so a lot of us, like in South Africa, will receive a, a ultimate tournament drag. You'll see the branding's different. A couple of little cosmetics like the, the ATDs are blue here, where the UTDs are the grey colour of the reel. Now, um, I if that was a topic you wondered about, apparently it's all exactly the same thing. Same drag, uh, nothing really, there's no real big difference to it. It's not that you've got a disadvantage. So going back to pricing of reels. Yes, this is a top end reel and what this will do for me is I'll have all the confidence in the world when I hook anything. So with a 5,000 reel like this, so I put 20 pound or 30 pound braid on you, I will with confidence go target a fish up to 200 kilos with this. Where it can become a problem, I've got the drag to fight that. So that's how you're going to make your decision in selecting your braid. The 30 pound, you'll be able to tighten up more on that fish to pull it a bit harder. Even 40 pound, you can tighten up even more and pull it harder so it won't take as much line but if you fish thinner and that's where your problem is going to come if you fish a 20 pound line on you and it's a really big fish with a lot of stamina that's going to swim very far and it's going to need maybe six to eight hundred meters you might not have that capacity on this reel and that's where i'll go to a bigger reel but i'll have the confidence to target a 200 kilo fish i'll just make sure i fight it accordingly um, and that's a whole new topic on its own a smaller reel can also land bigger fish. It's not advised that you go to the sardine run or target two 300 kilo fish with a small reel like this. That's why it's important to make sure you've got the right tackle and that's pure consideration. With this it's going to be a luck situation. But what I'm getting at, I'll stand on the beach in the sky, I'll fish a bait and a honeycomb or even on Zululand coast you're fishing for maybe diamonds which this reel will handle with ease and a big 100 kilo honeycomb picture up. You have to change the way you're going to fight that fish because the reel will be able to handle it. But if you're going to go target a 100 kilo honeycomb, this would not be the advice reel to use. So guys, yeah, just a bit of a chit chat and a brag session, like I said, about my new range. And I'll spool this up soon, probably this afternoon, and, and uh, put that on video for you guys as well. Uh, Mike, Mike uh, Dyer did this one for me quickly with the machine. Yeah, I can't wait. The sardine run is days away. It's happening. So I can't wait to put these reels to the test. Um, after the, the sardine shoal was there in the day and the guys maybe pulled them out or they washed up. Um, normally that night and even two, three nights after that, there'll be diamonds and maybe cob in the area. That's where I'll switch to the smaller reels. But when the smash is happening and those big shocks are around, that's when you pull out. The black beauty all right and uh, when the game fish are around with shoals which we didn't see much last year in the past with the sardine range a lot of times you'll get them and there'll be some eastern little tunas there'll be kuta there'll be kingies um, with the sardines this reel is more than sufficient to actually handle that but thank you for watching i hope that uh, shared a couple of interesting points i tried to answer some of the questions we received um, and use the opportunity to brag about my new range of reels. Thank you for watching. Remember to, to subscribe and also hit that little bell button up top uh, to get notifications every time we put up a, a new video. Thanks guys.